Hi, everybody. So about a month ago, I had the opportunity um, to hear Paul Graham speak. Um, and if you're, if you're not familiar with who Paul Graham is, Paul Graham um, is an early stage investor in a lot of startups. Uh, he's invested in Dropbox, Airbnb, Reddit, um, and hundreds of other companies. And he's probably one of the top five most influential people in tech right now. So when Paul talks, people listen. Um, and at this talk, he gave his uh, speech, you might have read the essay, um, called Seven Frighteningly Ambitious Startup Ideas. Um, now you're probably thinking, what, what makes a startup idea frightening? Like, why, why would that be scary? Why would anything be really that scary? Um, well, these ideas, they're scary because they change the way that um, systems work. They change the way that people live lives. They change the jobs that are available. Um, a good example of an idea like this that happened in the past is things like the internet and easy access to publishing, um, you know, Twitter, social media, things like that, how it completely revolutionized the way uh, the newspaper industry works. It's been turned upside down. And in fact, we're in a building right now, RJI, that exists to help find new ways for journalism to thrive in the 21st century. Um, so those are the kind of ideas that he's talking about, ideas that would fundamentally change the way that industries work. Now, one of those seven ideas that he uh, mentioned is replace universities. Now, that's a, huge, that's a huge idea, and all of us in this room, like that's scary to us because we've all benefited a ton from the this great university that we have here in town. Um, now, I'm not going to purport to know how you would even go about changing, you know, you know, replacing university. That's, that's a huge thing that you would do, and I don't even know that you would want to do it in a lot of areas. Um, but I do want to talk about one area where I think um, universities, and particularly uh, a place where education isn't doing great, and that's startup education, education for entrepreneurship and things like that. Um, in the past, the, the kind of default route for someone who was interested in education and startups and things like that was to go to an MBA. That was, that was the, um, uh, the, the degree that people got, um, and that's, that's what I did. Now, I would like to describe in this talk maybe um, some reasons why the MBA shouldn't be the default um, degree that you would go after, and some ways that maybe uh, startup education should change, entrepreneurship uh, should be taught in different ways, and maybe ways that universities could adapt uh, to help better prepare people who want to start businesses, people who want to work with small business, people who want to work in tech startups. Um, so to start off, the, the big first thing that I think that really struggles in universities and in uh, particularly MBA settings is there's this big focus on, in, on analysis. Um, the kind of core tenets of an MBA program, which work really well for uh, people who want to go into finance, people who want to go into consulting, into management, those same tools that make, uh, are, that are really great for MBAs that want to do that are not as good for people who want to go into startups. Um, so I've actually adapted this, uh, this model. This is from Derek Sievers, this uh, CD Baby uh, co-founder. His was actually titled Ideas for Execution, so I've, I've kind of adapted a little bit. And how you read this, is that analysis and execution are simply just multipliers of each other. So you know, if you were to have a weak analysis and you would combine it with brilliant execution, that would leave you with a $10 million company. That's, that's pretty huge. Now, if you were to take brilliant analysis and combine it with weak, uh, weak execution, that's a $20,000 company. So not as great. So what you realize here is that if you're in a startup, the value that you can get is much greater if you learn how to execute really well to do something, to make something, to build something, to sell something, whatever that is. Execution is the core of what startups, uh, people who want to go into startups, and the people that you see succeed are really good at executing on ideas, even if the idea isn't great or the analysis isn't great. So that's area number one. Um, the second area where I think uh, MBAs really struggle is with, uh, it's particularly for people who want to go into startups, has to do with opportunity costs. Now, I actually did learn opportunity costs in, in my MBA, so I have to get a shout out there. Um, so the, uh, the first thing is $120,000. Your average MBA costs about $60,000 a year. It takes two, thousand, or two years to complete. Um, now, it's m less in the Midwest, more on the coast. You can adapt it to your own situation. So if this is you know, something you're considering, uh, you can use that to your advantage. Now, $120,000 of real dollars, that's, like, that's tangible money that you have to pay somebody. Um, that's a lot of money. <laughs> um, I, I could use that for a lot of different things, to start a business, um, to, you know, to start a career, to start, you know, to buy a car, you know, there's lots of things you can do with $120,000. Um, 
The second thing is five years. Now, five years is actually the real opportunity cost of an MBA. So if your goal is to get to a startup, to be in a startup, to work in entrepreneurship, if you want to get an MBA, it's actually going to take you more like five years versus two because you're going to spend probably a year. If you, if you haven't been in education for a while, you're going to spend a year preparing for an MBA. You're going to spend two years in it. Then afterwards, you're probably going to have to get a job uh, that, that pays well to be able to pay off this $120,000. And typically, those jobs don't exist in startups. That's, that's just the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Um, startups tend to not be as well-funded as companies that have existed, uh, Fortune 500. So um, you know, if your goal is to be in a startup, you've now spent under $20,000 in five years, and you're not in a startup. So it's kind of like the, the whole social network thing, like where uh, Mark Zuckerberg says, if you've invented Facebook, you'd have invented Facebook. Well, if you want to be in a startup, go be in a startup. You know, don't, uh, don't waste your time on something else. Um, so the last point is, in some cases, uh, th the things that you learn in an MBA are actually counterproductive to what happens um, in a startup. There are things that are really great for working in a big business, things that are really great for working in consulting, they, are at, they actually don't work as well in, in uh, startups. So for instance, one of the core tenets of an MBA program is uh, a business plan competition. You know, you spend uh, a semester writing a business plan. It's a 20-page document. You, you come up with five-year financial spreadsheets. Um, it's this really big document that seems really awesome and great. Um, now, the problem that, with that is when you go out into the real world and you actually work in a startup is you write this document. It's 20 pages. You think you've accomplished a lot. Now, one week later, something changes. That document doesn't work anymore. So what do you do? Um, your options are pretty limited. You, well, I, we wrote this document a week ago. This is the plan. This is the plan. We have to do the plan. So you do the plan, and now two years later, you're broke. You don't have any money, and um, you know, your wife probably divorced you or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, you know. You're not in a good situation. Or you can change the write, rewrite your business plan. Well, no, that's going to take another month, because it takes a long time to write those. Uh, so those just don't work. You actually have to unlearn that experience that you had. And, uh, business school, and, and, and it takes a while. I, you know, I, I joined a startup in undergrad, and I brought a lot of these preconceived notions to it, and um, it's a tough to unlearn that, that um, big business mentality uh, that, you, that you get. Um, another, another good example of this is uh, the resources that big businesses have that you tend to apply that work great you know, when you have funding like Microsoft or something like that is maybe you can go out and hire a sales force, or maybe you can uh, you know, apply some uh, or you know, org management techniques that will help you know get better efficiency out of X, Y, or Z system. It just doesn't work that way in a startup because it's you and three other guys in a garage, and you have to do the work. Like if something if something breaks, like you don't have a hundred thousand dollars that you can hire a sales force with or something like that. You just have to find a way to make it work. So those are the big three things that I think are, where uh, you know an MBA or a general purpose degree really struggle. Now the good thing is that. Um, there's ways to counterbalance this. Is, you know, if you do decide to pursue an MBA or a uh, business degree or th things like that, you can actually supplement your education in ways that you can get the best of both worlds. Um, so what I would do is I would encourage you, if you are interested in entrepreneurship, if you're interested in doing startups, if you're interested in kind of building a business that you can run on your own, is while you're in undergrad or while you're in MBA or you know, while you're in these great learning environments where you have lots of free time, where um, you, where there's a cushion to fall back on, you know, if something goes wrong, the landing is a lot softer if you land somewhere here versus if you land in the real world. Um, things can be scary if you fall out there, but here you have a great support system that you can fall back on. So I would, I would start off, I would, number one thing I would do is get involved with the local startup in some form or fashion. Um, you know, just go in and start doing things. A lot of times they need people that can just hands on deck, that can actually help out and do things. So I would do that. Um, I would try and start your own business. Um, and this doesn't have to be a complicated big idea. It can be something small. And if you think, hey, I don't have any ideas. I don't have any skill sets. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I, I guarantee you that's wrong. You know, if you say you're really good at walking dogs, well, go to the nice side of town, ask the neighbors if they can use someone to walk their dogs, and charge them $20. That's a business. You've made money. That's a real skill set that um, is hard to learn. And uh, by doing that, you'll get a lot of experience in how sales works and how um, you know, basically a business gets started. Um, if you're interested in doing uh, tech startups, which is where my primary focus is, you're going to need to use, learn the tools of the internet. Uh, and that's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, things like that. Go out and learn these. Ask your friends how they build web apps, how they build mobile apps. Um, jump online, 
learn uh, tools there. Both my co-founders did this, and they're two of the best programmers I know. Neither of them have CS degrees. You don't need things like that. The tools are available. They're easily accessible. Um, it just means you have to go out and do it. Um, the other things I would do is explore more things outside of uh, what you get in your local curriculum. So go, go out and find a nonprofit that you support uh, or that you think is a great cause and try and raise $1,000 for them. You'll learn more from that experience than anything you can uh, in a classroom setting. Trying to raise $1,000, that's a big deal. Like if you could go out and tell somebody that, hey, I raised $1,000 for this campaign, that's a huge deal, that's really cool. And it, it's not as hard as you would think. Um, you'll, you'll fall on your face a few times, but um, after you fall down, you'll get back up and you'll do it again and eventually you'll succeed. Um, start to build up a following online too. So like start a personal blog, a newsletter, whatever it is. See if you can build a community around some of your thoughts, your processes, things like that. Um, and that way when you actually do go to uh, have an idea or uh, want to start a company or things like that, you'll have an audience that you can market to, um, that you can sell to, that you can bounce ideas off of um, instead of having to start from scratch without a network or anything like that. Uh, the last thing, startups are all consuming. Uh, they'll take over your life if you don't watch out. So um, you, need to, you need to stay healthy, whether it's training for a marathon or you know, uh, playing basketball with your friends or um, going out to eat with uh, the people who don't work in startups or don't do things like that. Uh, you need to stay sane and making sure you still have a connection to the local world. So uh, these are just a few ideas that I think um, would really supplement um, an education for uh, startups and entrepreneurships and things like that. And I guarantee you that if you were to go through even just three or four of these ideas um, while you're in school or after school or something like that, and then compare you to the average person who comes out of these schools, you're gonna be more prepared for starting your own business, for succeeding in uh, entrepreneurship, or if you decide to join a startup, you're gonna be look better on paper to the person who's going to be hiring you than kind of the carbon copy uh, graduates that come out of a local degree. So um, these are so I hope you uh, benefited from this talk a little bit, maybe learned something. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me throughout the day. So thanks. Thank you.